Bruno said, Governor Babangana Zulu makes a list of demands of the federal government delegation today in Meduguri, including that the president should sanction mercenaries to help flush out the insurgents. And a former secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Babache Lawa, was arraigned today in court alongside others over the allegations of the popularly alleged grass cutting contract scam. Hello everyone and welcome to Politics Today on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloye. Tonight our attention is on how Nigeria can end the spate of insecurity across several states of the country. And the governor of Kaduna State, Nasser Arafa, is our guest. So stay with us everyone. But first, let me bring you up to speed with some of the stories that you need to know. First, a former secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Babachi Lawa, and six others have been rearranged by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission over an alleged fraudulent 544 million grass cutting contract. The defendants again pleaded not guilty when the amended 10 counts of fraud were read to them before Justice Charles Agbaza of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Jabi Abuja. The arraignment, which is the second time since the case started following the demise of uh, the former trial judge, Justice Jude Okeke, on the 4th of August 2020. The EFCC had alleged, among others, in the 10th count, that the defendants fraudulently converted cumulative proceeds of grass cutting contract worth over 500 million naira, which Lawal has then, as you have allegedly awarded, to the companies in which he had interest. Trial has been fixed for the 28th to 22nd of January 2021. On the issues of partisan politics, the All Progressive Congress APC said it will embark on fresh membership registration and revalidation of its members of, as from Saturday, December the 12th, 2022, Saturday, January the 9th, 2021. In a statement signed by the party's National Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee and Yobe State Governor May Malabuni, the party says it has consulted with stakeholders, including President Muhammad Buhari, on the exercise. The statement appealed to states, local governments, and world leaders to take all the necessary steps to ensure smooth and transparent registration exercise. Mr. Mayor Malabu Nifala adds that membership revalidation exercise will also be conducted during the period. The party last week also announced an emergency neck meeting to hold later this week. Tonight, our attention is on the security situation in the country. Most Nigerians are not happy. People outside of the country are also worried about the situation, especially in the wake of what happened in Meduguri. Our special attention is to the peculiar northern region where banditry, Boko Haram insurgency is biting hard. In the wake of the killing of farmers in Meduguri last weekend, a federal government delegation led by the Senate President Hamel Lawan has visited Meduguri. The governor of Brunei, Babangana Zulu, made a set of recommendations to the delegation, which include ensuring immediate recruitment of youth in the military to boost military strength, engage the services of Neborini, J. Chad, and Cameroon to clear the remnants of the insurgents in Lake Chad and the Mandara Mountains. He also requested that there is provision for mine resistance, armored personnel carriers, and other equipment for the military police and other paramilitary agencies engaging mercenaries, support the repatriation of IDPs in Cameroon and Niger, and increase livelihood support for the people of Bruno State. Over the weekend, too, in Kaduna State, at least seven persons were killed in fr fresh attacks in Jama, local government area of uh, Kaduna State. The Northern leaders have been speaking on the situation of things in that region. Tonight we'll be speaking with the governor of Kaduna State, Governor Mal uh, uh, Nasir Air of Five. But today, let me also tell you that the Minister of, of Information, Elijah Lai Mohammed, has said that, uh, that the, pre uh, the federal government needs the support of uh, uh, other countries to fight 
this insurgency. He said terrorism is a global issue and the federal government needs global support to combat it. He added that the nation has been denied this support and without adequate weapons, the nation will remain at the mercy of terrorists. Let me allow you to take a listen to the Minister of Information. When people talk about terrorism, they don't seem to appreciate the fact that terrorism is not a local issue. It's a global issue. And there's no part of the world that is not experiencing its own you know, pocket of terrorism. And I'm glad that you heard from the governor himself that the federal government has assisted a lot in curbing the insecurity in Benue State. We will never stop you know, uh, 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 protecting lives and livelihoods. But you must understand that we're also dealing with um, terrorists who are financed, you know, globally. And uh, we also need more support from the, uh, for, from global, you know, partners. For instance, Nigeria has made attempts to acquire better and more effective platforms to deal with terrorists. And for one reason or the other, we have been denied these, um, these uh, platforms, these weapons. And without adequate weapons, without adequate platforms, would remain, you know, at the mercy of, uh, you know, terrorists. Our people are in very difficult conditions. They are in two extreme conditions. On one side, if they stay at home, see, it's very sad. Indeed, it's very sad. So we are still appealing to the federal government to ensure recruitment of our man, of our boys, the recruitment of our indigents into the Nigerian army, which is very important. Again, we need our civilian JTF and hunters to be recruited into the Civil Defense Corps so that they can be form part of the agro-rangers with the view to protecting the population. Mr. President, should listen to the call of the, our people to ensure formation of a coalition for us to defeat the insurgents. All right, then, you heard the Minister of uh, Information, and of course, you heard the Governor of uh, uh, um, uh, Bronu State, Babangana Zulum, about the situation and the demands that is made. Let's get to speak with the Governor of uh, Kaduna State, Nasi Erufai, who joins us uh, uh, now via Zoom. Governor uh, Erufai, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, let me begin with perhaps the situation uh, in your home state of Kaduna, where about seven people were killed uh, over the weekend. It's worrisome, isn't it, that this sort of killing still continue? Governor Erufai, the question is, how best do you hope that the Kaduna situation can be stopped, perhaps on a permanent basis? Well, it is most unfortunate uh, that uh, after months of relative peace in Kaduna, some people decided to recklessly kill another person. And uh, as uh, usual, uh, those killed, uh, those that felt aggrieved, decided to carry out reprisal attacks at a pace much faster than we are used to. We had tried to reach out to contain the situation. We had deployed security forces, uh, but it's unfortunate that these lives were lost. Uh, as our 
government has always said people should not take the law into their own hands. Uh, when there is a breach of the law, uh, the appropriate thing is to report to the security agencies or traditional rulers or even community leaders to intervene and ensure that due process of law is complied with. So long as people decide to resort to self-help, these kind of situations will not go away and it's most unfortunate, but I'm happy to report that the uh, special forces on the ground have arrested suspected uh, perpetrators of the acts on both sides. And uh, we are going to vigorously uh, investigate and prosecute them. But on a permanent uh, basis, Governor Arufai, uh, for the issue in Kaduna, what would you suppose would be a long-term solution to the problem? The long-term solution to the problem is for people to realize that there is law and order, there are security agencies, there are constituted authorities, and just comply with the law. If somebody does anything to you that is that you consider unlawful, you report to the appropriate authorities and uh, wait for the wheels of justice to take course. You should not resort to self-help because every human being has the capacity to resort to self-help. If we, if we all do that, we resort to, we, you know, we go back to the state of nature where no one is safe. We have been preaching this. Uh, we believe that communities must work together to live in peace. No one is going to chase anyone away. We are all Nigerians and we have the right to be where we are in any part of the country. We have uh, seen uh, a lot of progress uh, because of the involvement of our traditional rulers and community leaders in preaching this message. And uh, we hope that uh, more and more of this will uh, mainstream across the state. And, um, you know, people will rely on uh, constituted authority to resolve disputes and uh, uh, prosecute those that are guilty of any criminal offenses rather than resort to self-help. The issue is also a matter of... Uh cause and effect, consequences on what people do. Uh, the, the question some people have raised as to whether or not some people have been slapped on the wrist for some of these uh, grievous actions. Again, is the government of Kaduna looking at a local solution to some of this problem? Perhaps allowing the local community, like you find in some uh, federal states across the world, where there are local policing methods that have been used uh, to curb some of these criminalities? No, we've always uh, made the very strong argument that uh, one centralized police in a federation does not work. Nigeria is the only country in the world that is a federation that has only one police force. We have made the argument that states should be allowed to have their own police and uh, even local governments should be allowed to have community policing. The number of policemen we have in Nigeria is inadequate. It's less than half of what we need and a large percentage of them are engaged in non-police duties like carrying the handbags of uh, the wives of important people. We need to have a greater footprint of policing in Nigeria. And the only way to achieve that in a fast track manner is to amend the constitution and put policing and the concurrent list as recommended by the APC True Federalism Committee. And uh, so that we have more policemen in any case, today, most state governments are responsible for the running costs of the police. The federal government only pays the salaries of the uh, policemen, but the running costs, their logistics, their vehicles, their fuel, their communications, are all responsibilities of state governments uh, across, the, across the country. So what, what, what are we afraid of? Let us just amend the constitution and allow state policing, and in fact, go further and allow local governments to have their own police. That way you have more security footprint. Uh, there will be very strong regulations to restrict the activities of the local government police as well as the state police and differentiate between federal crimes and state crimes as we have in uh, virtually every federation. But Nigeria Nigeria is a unique yeah. yeah. So we, we, are due for, we are due for a break, but if in 30 seconds you can uh, take on this, you are a very influential person in the APC as a governor, as a close friend to the president. You have made this recommendation. Why is it difficult to implement in the face of the fact that mil uh, hundreds of people have been killed every day? 
Look, uh, the status quo is always difficult to change. Uh, people don't want to change. And uh, you have to understand that we have a history of coming from military rule. We have a constitution written under the military that uh, still looks at Nigeria through unitary lenses. But it is clear that this has not worked. Uh, we have submitted our report. The president agrees with the contents, the main thrust of the report. And uh, we've drafted bills that will enable the amendment of the constitution as well as uh, statutory amendments to give effect to our recommendations. We, you don't need the president or the federal government or even the APC to put this into effect. Any member of the National Assembly can pick, any, can pick our report, pick any of the bills and uh, sponsor them as private member bills. I think uh, the reason why we don't have this is inertia, is the fact that people don't want change. But Nigeria is overdue for uh, this um, redesign of our security architecture and many other aspects of our polity and economy. And I think I call on the members of the National Assembly to take our report, look at the bills that we drafted and work on them and try to give us state police, try to give us state judiciary, try to give vest the control of mines and oil in the states, all onshore oil and minerals should be vested in the states, offshore, uh, in the government of the federation uh, while the states uh, pay royalties and taxes. That's what it should be. That's how a federation should run, and we should go back to it. All right. Governor Rufa, please stay with us, because we still have more to talk about on the state of the federation. Perhaps some frank conversation on where we should be and where we, we're supposed to head. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get back to the conversation with Governor of Kaduna, said Nasser Erufai. Thank you so much, Governor Erufai, for talking to us tonight. Um, so we're looking at solutions, and uh, perhaps it's worrisome that these sort of things are happening. And you've mentioned part of the solution. I mean, you are speaking now, and I'm, I'm very certain that you are just one call away to President Muhammad Buhari. It does look like the way things are going we are handicapped as a people in solving these problems. As, as, as a key stakeholder and as an influential person in this government, the ruling APC, urgently we need a solution to this problem. And what would that be? Look, I, I, I don't think the solution lies with President Mohamed Buhari alone. Of course, you know, I can always call Mr. President, but we presented this report to the president in January 2018 along with the then chairman of our party, uh, Chief John Oyegun, and he accepted virtually all the recommendations we, 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 we incorporated in the report uh, before we even finalized it. And, uh, you know, so I don't think it's a matter of a call away from President Muhammad Buhari. The, President Buhari has no issue at all with having these uh, recommendations implemented. This is in the purview of the National Assembly. It's up to the National Assembly to take these recommendations and convert them into laws and constitutional amendments so that uh, once they pass with the truth as majority, uh, this will go to the states. We made several recommendations that will fundamentally uh, make Nigeria work better. And uh, we, 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 we had nine governors as members of that committee, several senators, several members of the House of Reps and uh, ministers. So there was broad consensus across everyone that things are not working. We need to do this for this for our country to 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 work better. And uh, it's not about President Muhammad Buhari. It's the National Assembly that ought to take this and move move it forward. Of course, President Muhammad Buhari can sponsor executive bills uh, uh, for that to happen, but uh, he doesn't need to. Any member of the National Assembly, as I said, can pick any of the bills we drafted. Uh, more than thirty or such bills and put them through the process of legislation. And if it's a constitutional amendment, as soon as two thirds of the House and Senate pass it, it will go down to the state houses of assembly. And I can assure you, the Nigerian Governors Forum fully supports all the recommendations we made in that report. In fact, at the time we made the recommendation, even PDP governors like the former governor of Bielsa State came to Kaduna, commended uh, my chairmanship of that committee and uh, put his whole weight behind it. So, you know, this is something in which there is broad bipartisan consensus. So there is no reason why it shouldn't be done uh, quick and fast. 
Okay, so, I mean, um, it's interesting that your political party, APC, is in the leadership of both arms of uh, the National Assembly, both upper and uh, lower chambers of the National Assembly, and also you, you made this recommendation as a political party. Uh, so it does yes. mean that this is a partisan position. How then can we move, from, transit from that partisan position to the issue of government taking up that position, the fact that your government is in charge at the federal level, executive arm level, and also at the, nat uh, the National Assembly level. Well, as I said, Sharon, you know, uh, first, yes, it was a party committee, but there was broad bipartisan consensus. Many PDP governors, even in 2018, supported uh, the, the broad thrust of our recommendations. And as I said, uh, Governor Siriaki Dixon even came to Kaduna and uh, more or less adopted the report of our committee. And uh, at the time, he was the chair of PDP Governors Forum. So there is broad by bipartisan consensus. So it's not about moving it from our party to the government or anything like that. As I said, what we did was not just write a report and make recommendations. We, dr we actually drafted the constitutional amendments required. So you don't need anyone, you don't need any inter, interlocutor, any member of the National Assembly can pick up any of these bills tomorrow and present them to the, the House uh, or Senate and put them through the process of legislation. Uh, by the time it gets two-thirds majority in the House and Senate and uh, we get two-thirds of the states uh, assemblies supporting it, uh, the president will assent to it. As I said, we presented this report the draft to Mr. President in January 2018, and he has agreed to everything that we included in the report. So it's not uh, an issue of uh, moving it from party to government. It is something that is there in the public uh, domain. If you Google uh, APC True Federalism Committee report, you'll find it there. The bills are there. The recommendations yeah. are there. You pick what you think you want to uh, support and get on with it. It's All right. Since, since, governor governor Rufa, it's interesting that you have raised this. I have a copy of the recommendations. Perhaps the next yeah. level is to do advocacy to ensure that the National Assembly look at what you have said is a solution to stopping people being killed in Nigeria. But I saw some kind of frustration in the eyes and in the words of your friend, the governor of Bernou State. And not only him is frustrated about the killings, also, the Sultan of Sokoto is frustrated. Let me read to you some of the things that the Sultan said. The Sultan said a few days Show ago. Show we are all frustrated. I am frustrated in my state. Many governors are frustrated in their states. Uh, we are called chief security officers only in name. We have no control over coercive instruments of state. You know, it, that's it. We are all frustrated. We want are you to be helpless? able to take our state into our Are houses. the governors helpless in their states, governor? We are. We are almost helpless. I mean, the NSAS protest clearly showed the limit to the control of governors over the police and the, and, and, and the army. Some of us have more influence than others, but to a large extent, you know, you ask, uh, uh, you, you ask uh, the commissioner of police to do something, he, he has to play with the IG. This is, this is the reality. Even though we fund most of the operations of the police, we are not in control of the police. I don't determine who gets posted to my state as IG. And if I give him directives, he can decide uh, to flout the directives. But Governor Rufai... We are all frustrated. So, uh, yeah. Governor Rufai, if the Sultan says the North is the worst place to live, he said bandits had become more daring. And in fact, he said, uh, as far as, apart from the fact that the North is the worst place to live, he said household and markets with AK-47, nobody is challenging them. So if you say there's so much frustration in the governors... Where then do you go to? When we have made representation, you know, uh, to the to to the to to the to the president and the vice president, one of the most important uh, steps uh, which I have written to the president about, and he has concurred, is the need for the police council to be meeting regularly. The constitution uh, created a national police council in which all the 36 governors are members. And it is that council that should actually regulate the operations of the police. It, it only needs to consider the appointment of IG. It should be meeting regularly so that the, 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 the operations of the police are tightly regulated by the governors. 
right now the, the council is not meeting and uh, the IG just reports to the president when in actual fact he's supposed to report to, to the president and all 36 of us. That is one. Secondly, uh, there is a need to look at the disposition of the armed forces across the country and target them at areas of uh, greatest need. In the Northwest and Northeast, we are dealing with banditry and uh, the Boko Haram insurgency, and there is a need for sustained and coordinated bombing and ground operations to wipe out these bandits and the remnants of Boko Haram. It can be done. It's a matter of just continuously doing it, not doing it in one state, and then they move to another state, and then when, they, when you move to that state, they move to another state. There is a lot of military operation going on. There is a lot of, uh, you know, boots on the ground, special forces, mobile police and police on the ground. But it is reactive. It is not taking into account the fact that these bandits must be wiped out at the same time in all the states once and for all. All right. And this Does one that will be <laughs> Yeah. I'm out. I'm told that I'm now totally out of time. But I have two very critical political questions that I'd like you to help me handle, perhaps in 30 seconds. The first being that you stood, uh, you spoke against the issue of zoning in our politics as a head of 2023 uh, election. Has your party taken a position on where the presidency is going uh, when people say that it's best to go to the southern region of the country? Do you think it's fair that, for example, a southeast should get the slot? Look, um, you know, I, I think it's important to make this clarification. I personally am against zoning because I believe that no country has you know, in the 30 years I've spent studying nations, I have not seen a single country in the world that has made progress by picking leaders based on where they come from or their ethnicity or religion. So in principle, I'm against it and I don't practice it. If you look around me, you see that I work with people from every part of the country, every religion, I don't care. I just want to get things done and I want the most competent person with the capacity and commitment. Okay, but that's a personal position. However, I believe that as a party, after eight years of President Buhari, we should honor the informal agreement of ensuring that power goes to the south, okay? Uh, now, whether it is southwest or southeast or south-south, that's a different matter. What right. we have agreed, we have, uh, we have a gentleman's agreement that, uh, you know, power should go to the south. And I support that. I don't right. necessarily agree with it. I don't think we should select leaders in that way. But in the present day of present day Nigeria, it is an interim measure that we need to 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 to, to pursue. Now, right. having said that, Governor, it's up to the party I'm, I'm at the right time to yeah. make that decision. Our party has not taken any position as far as I know. All right. I'm actually at a very threshold. I'm totally out of time. Uh, but I must indeed thank you so much tonight for talking to us right here on China Television. Governor Nasir Rufel of Thank you so much. That's our show tonight. Bye-bye, everyone.